Hey guys, I'm back. Rolled the trailer back in. Uh, I can, the video before we got the floor down, got the undercoating on. Today, we're gonna start making walls. Well, at least making wall components. Stick around, let's do this thing. This is Clarence Cadiddle Hopper and you're watching my YouTube channel. Woo doggy, let's go build, break, or blow something up. Okay, here's what we're going to do. T well, this video, and uh, it, it will tie into the rest of them, but we're going to make wall components. We're going to take these. These are uh, one by twos. They're just um, inch and a half wide, three quarters inch thick. We're pretty close to three quarter inch thick, <laughs> but they're basically they're just furring strips. Now, I could have used a two by two, but once a two by two is already twisted, it's hard to take that twist out. But to use two one by twos, you can actually straighten one whenever you nail the other one to it. So you're just sistering them together to make one two by two. So let's go. I gotta make 48 of these. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to look for the bad sides, put them together in the middle. I'm not cutting these to length. I'm just going to get them flush on the edges. And then, nail it together. Using an inch and a quarter Senko staples. And I'll use several of these. All right, that, that will work. All right, so you saw me bending this back and forth. What happens is these aren't straight but once you got one side nailed you can kind of bow it and pull that vinyl and it'll still catch but you can kind of straighten it out and that's what I did now we'll nail it from the other side Good morning. It's the next day. You know what? It's stinking cold still. Good night. Oh man. Let's continue on. Well, you're right down here to where I can see you. Maybe you can see me. I'm, I'm changing up what I'm doing on my ceiling. And I'll show you why. Uh, for the roof of this camper, if I take, and I'm doing everything on one foot centers, if I take uh, two of these just scissored together, it's actually a lot stronger than you'd think, but it's not strong enough. I'll show you. I'm gonna put all my 208 pounds on here. That was four and an eighth, and I'm five and a half. That's a lot of deflection. Now I do know that it would be stronger, you know, with the full wrap over it. But I also know that if I take a piece of flat strap and put it in between them, and instead just stapling them, I'll staple them and screw them. 
that will significantly change the way that this is structurally made. It'll make it a whole lot stronger. Now, I'm not, not gonna do that on my walls. I don't have to worry so much about the deflection in and out because there's not gonna be a lot of weight on it all the time. The weight is actually bearing straight down from end to end, not side to side. That's why whenever you uh, look at a house that's being built, the walls can be two by fours, but the ceiling joists and roof joists are typically you know, two by six or two by eight, depending on how, how far the span is. So basically what I'm doing is I'm changing this from a two inch by putting a metal in it into basically a two by four. That's how much of a change it'll make. I shouldn't see any deflection at all. When we get to that point, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. But for right now, let's move all this junk out of the garage and start laying out walls. Hot dog. Okay, I've got everything uh, moved out of the garage. Kind of an odd place to film from, but it's the best place I could figure out. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna start laying out the floor. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put the three sheets down on the floor first, and then, I'm actually gonna use those to mark it out. And that way I can get exact measurements on my wall sections, on the uh, studs that are going up. I can just lay it out and uh, we'll keep going. Here we go. I'm sorry guys. Let me move your chair so that you can sit down and watch from over here. Now you might wanna look from here. Okay, so that's our, that's uh, basically almost the size of our wall. It's not that tall, but it is that long. So, we'll see. Let's get started. First, we gotta hydrate. Diet Coke. Ah, here we go. Now I'm going to take a couple of measurements and uh, off of the trailer itself so that I know where the wheel wells are. 70 and a half and 85 and three quarters. That's the edges of our wheel well. That would be the one place that we're not on a one foot center. But it'd be pretty stinking close. Ah, this will work. Okay, if you remember, um, do you remember, our walls will overhang the outside edge of the, uh, well, the outside sheeting will. It'll overhang the outside edge of the walls, or of the floor. Uh, so, I'm gonna mark that so that I know how far up my frame is gonna be, and how far down my actual uh, skin will be. Okay, so on my camper on the inside, I want six foot four uh, clearance in the back for headspace. That's how far I want it off the, off the floor. Now I don't want a seven foot or a 10 foot ceiling. I don't need it that tall. It's already gonna be tall once it's up on this trailer. So I'm gonna go six foot four in the rear and uh, then it'll come to the front and it'll slope down and then be flat. So, I'm gonna go to the back of the trailer because I'm acting like it's gonna stand up just like this. Even though all my marks will be on the outside, I don't care. I'm gonna paint it anyways. I'm, well, I'm gonna at least, I'm gonna prime it first. So, I won't see any of those. Front of my camper. It's laid out a little bit different. Okay. So, we got my countertop height of three foot, so I'm gonna mark it three foot, 11 and 16 inches. And then I've got 18 inches of clearance between those bottom of my cabinet. And then, I don't want to trim 
conditioning at the bottom of my cabinet until after I can get my nailers in. So I'm going up four inches from there. That's not a lot of drop, but what it's going to do is, whenever it's sitting, my uh, my air conditioner will run off of it. It won't just sit on the top. And when it's sitting out in the weather, you know, the only part that's actually not sloped is the back edge. But if I lower the tongue just a little bit, it'll all run off. I won't have any water setting on the top of my camper. And I'm doing this slope. To actually help with a little bit of aerodynamics. It's not a big slope by any means, but it is a slope. And I'm sloping it back to one foot. Okay, so I got six foot two. 16 when I first started this I really contemplating or contemplated doing a barrel vaulted ceiling I decided no too much trouble way too much cutting so it would have been cool though, but maybe next time. All right, time to lay out my, my studs. So in order to do this, uh, we'll have to mark off each one foot segment and then I can measure up how tall every one of them is exactly. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to build my wall up, put my top plate on, and then I'll have a top plate, a ceiling joist or a roof joist will sit on top of it with an edge band that will go around it. That will give me a solid nailing surface for here. I'll also be able to join every one of the ends to be sitting on the walls and that'll allow me to bring my sheeting all the way up to the very roof edge. So I can draw that out next. Now, don't forget, we got a, a seal plate on the bottom that all of these will be nailed together with and then nailed down to the actual floor. Well, more than likely screwed. So, got to mark that off too. All right, there she is, one wall, all laid out. I'm gonna go eat some lunch, take my coat off. It's finally warmed up. I'll be back.